WOCA. Ocala. Five minutes after 11 o'clock. One of the habits that I have, Robin, is uh, checking the news feed on Facebook. And, and I really don't think it's it's too bad. I, I actually, uh, it, it's interesting because in the old days, you know, you pick up a newspaper the first thing in the morning, you catch up on the news according to the news people. But on, on the news feed, you, you catch up on people who are your friends or even extended friends. And, and in doing this, I have followed some people who have had some things happen to them uh, without getting details so that people don't feel embarrassed that I'm actually talking about them. But I've heard people who were in car accidents, people who've had things falling on them, uh, people who have fallen into holes. One of our publicists uh, fell into a hole. Yes. Going to get, what was she going to get? A breakfast sandwich or something? Yeah, she's getting a breakfast sandwich. Yeah, and fell into a hole, and now she's got wheels on wheels coming to her house because she can't <laughs> exactly. walk for, for a <laughs> few she months. She fractured her leg. So, she's so it, it, it is interesting to watch the progress of the people that I don't always know firsthand uh, through these reports that they put on Facebook and it's kind of neat. In the studio today, um, you know, we have these these great guests that we get from Strive and and uh, from the folks over there, but Leah Caruso is what, in Wisconsin today? Yes. Uh, so she has invited three guests to be with us today. Dr. Michael Wood has been with us before. He is a doctor of physical therapy at Strive. Uh, uh, Brendan Irwin is coming here. So he described himself as a rookie and I'm going to try this. A licensed Prosthetist, orthotist. Am I saying that right? Pretty close. And and that means you handle uh, prosthetics. Prosthetics and orthotics. Oh wow. Okay, I'm going to find out what that is. I think I know what prosthetics are, but and and then with us again, also Dr. Ranjit Gowda. Hi. Is in the there studio. Good morning to all three of you guys. And, and, and we're, so we're talking about physical therapy in general, correct? Today. A little bit. Yeah. So, oh, sort of, kind of. A little more. Than but there's a new clinic head. or something. Correct. Okay. What yeah. is the name of the clinic? Because Leah, did, Leah said she didn't know the name. It's primarily, um, a, it's a, we call it, it's a multidisciplinary clinic, basically a clinic with multiple disciplines like prosthetics, and it's in primarily intended to serve people who, who have prosthetic and orthotic needs. Okay. And you did mention that you're going to come to that and see what prosthetics and orthotics <laughs> was about. You're welcome to <laughs> fire that question at any time. <laughs> okay, so we'll just call it a clinic because I don't know what to call it. So, so I, I guess we could start with um, with Brandon. Am I saying your name right, Brandon? Brandon. Okay, Brandon. I'm sorry. Um, are we talking about artificial limbs? That's that's the prosthetic component. That's what I imagine with that word yeah, being. So a lot of okay. people are familiar with that, of course. Um, so prosthetics is um, basically when you have a, a body part that's missing, a leg or a, an arm that's been amputated, and so a prosthetic device would be replacing uh, that that piece that's missing. Uh, orthotically, uh, what we're dealing with is the the body part is there, it's present, but there's a weakness or a deformity that requires uh, bracing, uh, maybe oh, there's a, a pain okay. issue, so we're providing support. So um, so that's that's the main difference. I see, mm -hmm. I see. And you've been doing it long enough. I, I kind of overheard your, your chat before we went on the air. Have you seen technology make these things better? Uh, absolutely. Um, in particular, the, the, the area of prosthetics. Uh, we've seen a real advance with the materials being used. Um, wow from uh, microprocessor uh, control knees and, and feet with the introduction of hydraulic and pneumatic ankles. So there's definitely been some big advances uh, over the past, you know, 5, 10, 15 years. So is the microprocessor attached to the nerves? Not to the to nerves. Um, you're, you're talking about something that's a little bit outside of, of, of my realm of expertise, but the, the computer is actually within the knee uh, itself, and different manufacturers utilize that technology different. Um, and again, that sometimes that's in the in the knee, sometimes that's in the the ankle component, mm. or for an upper extremity patient, um, that's built into the to the arm as well. So the internet showed us um, a video of a guy, and, and I'm guessing this is an orthotic or an extreme orthotic, maybe, and he couldn't really walk, and he had this basically this exto skeleton made out of yeah. you know man-made things, right. and he was walking up the stairs, and he was crying because he yeah. couldn't walk at all before. And even though he looks like a, a robot in a way, because he's got all this stuff on the outside of him, he's literally yeah. improved his life. Do these things take practice? I mean, can you can you just strap it on and start running, or, or, do, or is that where the therapy comes from? 
Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's that's where we come in in therapy is, uh, you know, Brendan gets them fitted and uh, gets the device that they need, and then we have to teach them how to walk again or, okay. or how to use that arm again. Um, you know, and then the other thing you get is – Typically, these these uh, amputations uh, require a lot of time to recover, so they've laid in bed maybe for five months. So then you've got weakness and tightness and, and things that come for just laying in bed okay. that also have to be corrected before you can go back to, to walking and, and moving normally. There was a lady on one of those TEDx talks, you know, you've seen these things, and she's talking about how she... Uh, was on her anniversary of, of, of meeting her husband and they went to the first place they met and she finally reveals that the first place they met was at the Boston Marathon and she lost a leg yeah. in that bombing. Oh, wow. And she's standing on stage in shorts and from the camera's perspective, at least looking at it on video, you can't even tell yeah. which, which is the real leg and which, and she made it, she was a dancer. I think she was on that Dancing with the oh, Stars with show the stars, or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the point is she is dancing again and and well maybe that's a little optimistic f for most cases the fact is she can do it and that's i mean that's beautiful and wonderful right. yeah yeah and that's that's where um i think uh dr wood dr gato myself really want to work collaboratively uh with this clinic is um that woman that you saw it wasn't just one it was a team of people uh, mm. that that helped her to get to that point and so uh, oftentimes what happens uh, now is, is people will come into a prosthetic office, leave, go down to the therapist's office, leave, go to the physiatrist. Right. We want to we bypass all that, and, and as a service to the community, uh, we want to all be in this room together so we can, we can collaboratively figure out, you know, how can we best help this individual and, you know, improve their, their independence and achieve all their goals. And we can do that best when you got three of us uh, together joining and, uh, you know, wow. weighing in. Yeah. And do you, do you, Dr. Gowda, help with the emotional needs as well of the person? The emotional needs, um, the prosthetic and orthotic clinic, as we have now intended to start or do, is um, a lot of, um, they, they have... First of all, they will need a prescription for a particular prosthetic in order. It could be somebody who already has one and will need possibly having problems, will need a new one. So where I come in as a physician in this team right now is interact C because we're all we're all um, in the same field of uh, the biomechanics of the body and evaluating it and see what what is lacking, how we can correct it back. And I've had experience, for example, with with this. Uh, happens quite o more often in university hospitals always have an uh, interdisciplinary team and where all members related to this uh, a person who has a prosthetic or orthotic team are there so we can put our heads together and figure out the best thing because a lot can come out of an interaction than a note written and being seen at another place a week later because a lot missed here we are in front of the patient we can make quick decisions if this we do this and and actually, an interesting anecdote comes up to my mind. My first experience with this was at the Veterans Hospital in Columbia, Missouri, mm. and was I'm t this is is sad to say it's more than 25 years <laughs> ago. But yeah. in the sense, I've been practicing that that far back. But and I actually earned another anecdote for what's an orthotic. It was my first lesson. The very first day I realized there are a lot of people coming there. I'm coming to the orthotic department. I need glasses. I said, glasses? Then the veterans oh. professor explained, those are an orthotic. And the veterans, at least at that time, classified eyeglasses. It was the same department, orthotic. Oh. Because an eyeglass, if you imagine, is a vision. It makes the vision better. But, not, but if you got an artificial eye, like a glass eye, that's a prosthetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, glasses. Yeah, yeah. So we all have orthotics in some way and so we are involved in this <laughs> bread and butter that's a good point yeah yeah, yeah we're involved we primarily want to be involved with this bread and butter aspect like say for example somebody having difficulty walking a foot orthotic is something that would help modify maybe make their walk pain free mm -hmm. we're not the only people of course there's podiatry or rheumatology in all different fields involved but we'd like to take it beyond just a foot orthotic or something they need a foot drop that's making them trip and fall or cause oh. hip fracture so we would put an ankle foot orthotic so these are all so it gets bigger and bigger than a knee orthotic or a hip knee and ankle foot orthotic along with the spine is what you're talking about that makes an exoskeleton mm -hmm. combine mm -hmm. and then you start adding motors and or but then the prosthetics is a lot is the next step where somebody has lost limb and of course, it really is a very specialized field where someone from Brandon's team, uh, Brandon himself. So all of us, we intend to 
get together on any people with the simplest need of having a difficulty walking or not able to pick up something with the hand mm -hmm. and Dr. would be able to hmm. interact with making the biomechanics and the muscular strength and okay. possible and I would come from the point of evaluating any neurologic muscle problem maybe a painful uh, nerve swelling that can be numbed or helped and the person mm -hmm. could use mm -hmm. the prosthetic now a little bit pain free emotional needs are very an important part and I, I hope so you psychiatry would, you think so, yeah. is a prosthetic and orthotic doctor for emotional problems <laughs> 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 in a way because we have the same brain but they got to give some devices to help them move along right, yeah. right. and medications maybe in that sense are an orthotic but that's a stretch to think of it that way well, if I could weigh in just very briefly on the emotional needs because it's a very important aspect to a lot of this um, especially for someone who's suffered you know the loss of a limb uh, you know, the company I work for, Mid Florida uh, Prosthetics and Orthotics, has been here in this local community for uh, for over 25 years. Uh, Frank Vero, the uh, the uh, former owner of the company, has been involved in this community for a long time. And being a a, uh, a locally owned operated company, we're very familiar with some of the different uh, counseling agencies in town. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, uh, I have a, a handful of patients, some of which that are counselors, and some of which are pastors that have been a, a real valuable asset so no, it's something really? that we're yeah. able to really get people connected uh, it's not technically part of our clinic but something that uh, it's got to you know, be part of that multidisciplinary absolutely. approach though mm -hmm. yep absolutely yeah. because i imagine that's that's a good part of it, is getting somebody in the right mindset they meet each other at the place and there's support groups too for special groups mm -hmm. and spinal cord special spinal cord injury special support groups we so have yes, to. Yes, that's an important part and very important. We part. have to take a little break, but we'll be right back. And uh, got so many more questions. And by the way, the phone lines are open. If you have any questions and you'd like to call it in, the number is six two two nine six two two. We'll take that break and be right back. is brought to you by myfwc.com. Safe boating is no accident. We'll start with some fog this morning. Otherwise, it's going to be a nice day. Partly sunny with a high of 83 to 88. And a few clouds tonight, a low 50 to 72. Looks like nice weather tomorrow and Saturday. Sunshine mixed with afternoon clouds. High of 82 to 86 tomorrow. High 83 to 87 Saturday. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Maggie Johnson. If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy. Never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results. And all but given up on my sex life. Then, I found the doctors at New Mayo Medical Center. Wow! They made a new male out of me. Feel like I'm 25 again. I have renewed vigor, so much more energy, and no longer worry about my performance. New Mail treated me like my situation was one of a kind. With a custom treatment plan that really works, I feel great. They can create one for you too. It does not matter if you suffer from low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, or just want to last longer. New Mail will help you. Call New Mail Medical Center today at 352-404-4779. 352-404-4779. That's 352-404-4779. It will change your life. 352-404-4779. Career Source Citrus Levy Marion brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent, and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the first and third Wednesday of each month at 9.30 a.m. to Career Source Citrus Levy Marion and learn how they can help you. All right, 19 minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, pretty, very important topic uh, today. Dr. Michael Wood is here. Brendan Irwin is here. And Dr. Ranjit Gowda is here. We're talking about, let me see, I took notes to try to figure out what to call this thing. It's the, pro I'm going to call it the Prosthetic and Orthotic Multidisciplinary Clinic over at Strive, right? It's, it's all Strive. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, okay, the one question, or the one thought I had was that obviously if you have a prosthetic, an artificial limb, you're never going, that, that's never going to help grow that limb back. But do the orthotics sometimes help to uh, he, heal or improve the function of a foot or a, or a hand so that eventually you don't need the orthotic? Does that ever happen? Definitely. Um, it depends on what the, why the need is there. Um, you know, um, actually, uh, Dr. Wood and I were talking right before I came in here uh, about uh, 
patient uh, that suffered a stroke. And, you know, oftentimes there is a, a fair amount of recovery that does occur. And, you know, uh, Dr. Wood can speak a little bit more to that. But in the interim, uh, you know, the, the orthosis would be there to kind of uh, bridge the gap, you know, as they're, they're maybe having some weakness in the dorsiflexors, you know, being able to lift that foot up. The brace can be there initially in conjunction with therapy. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dance. It's a chess game, you, you know, hmm. it, when you want to brace and, and when you want to maybe wait a little bit. But uh, Dr. Absolutely. Dr. So, um, you know, g just using that stroke and then the foot drop example that we've been talking about, uh, typically we look at recovery. The first year after a stroke, you're going to get the most recovery. Um, but you're also the weakest at that point. So that's where Brendan and his team would come in. You know, we want to brace them because we want them up moving, but we also don't want them to suffer a fall right. and then break a hip on top of the stroke. Yeah, and then, right, right. you know, the things just start piling up. So we brace them while we, uh, we work to build the strength back and build their balance back and, and build their confidence back. You know, that's one of the biggest things. Uh, they're, they're, they're scared, you know, because it's not working properly. Mm -hmm. So if we can get it to work properly, then they don't develop develop bad habits either you know so you don't you see some people out in the community they might kind of drag their leg behind well if they would have been braced properly they might have kept a more normal walking pattern okay gotcha right that makes sense what, what we uh, now that you've defined what an orthotic is um it almost feels weird to ask this question but the, the one thing that we the the lay people think of as an orthotic is that the thing Dr. Scholes sells in, in the store. So, so let's say you do need one of those orthotics. Mm -hmm. Is it is it just the same to get that seven dollar one off the in the pharmacy, or should we get something? You know what I mean? Is there, is there a good and bad orthotics at that level? Yeah. So uh, you know that for for that situation, uh, for many people, that's an appropriate way to to treat uh, what's going on. Um, where where we would really come in is not so much you know anyone can go to the store of course and pick something like that up but for some of your more severe cases um, yeah. someone that was severe pest planus you know flat foot um, deformity that's where uh, we got the best put orthotists in town uh, uh, Tony um, uh, takes care of many many people uh, with with pain and difficulty in their feet and um, and so that you know that's definitely something that we can help that's out. What with. I need, Robert. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We we do have a phone call, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Let's take that call. And uh, uh, Doctor, you'll have to put there. You go. <laughs> Good morning. You're on the air. Thank you for calling. Yes. Uh, thank you for the program. Very interesting. Uh, doctors, are there any insurances that cover artificial limbs? Sure. Um, most insurances will. In, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, um, the, you know, some of them, uh, you know, most of them nowadays do require an authorization uh, process. But you know, my staff uh, would you know be with you every step of the way in that and 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 getting that authorization. But but yes, uh, the short answer to your question is insurances do cover them. Um, you know, they they they're not inexpensive, um, but uh, but insurances do cover them, and um, you know, if there are financial difficulties, we certainly help people out with that as well. So that that should never be an obstacle for you know reaching out to us. Um, I'm guessing they're expensive, right? They are, uh, but yeah. again, um, you know, uh, I we we've, we've literally never turned somebody away. Wow! So, Thank you for the call. Good, good question. Do you have a special program for children because children grow, and you have to make sure that whatever they need mm. has to grow with them? Sure. Um, and and again, kind of get back to the insurance questions. Um, you know, insurance do realize that, and kids. Uh, whereas an adult, it might be two to five years in between replacement of prosthetic devices um, for children. If you get a go a year, that's that's good, you know, <laughs> because they can they can grow. But but you 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 take that into consideration uh, when you're when you're manufacturing the processes. You understand that they're going to grow, so you're going to you're going to build it slightly different than you would for an adult. You're going to allow for some growth. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yes, you know, going back to Robin's question about the emotional, I think all three of you shied away from that one because you're all into the physical. But I think this part of your job that you probably it's probably just natural when somebody is you know, scared or maybe sad because they've just lost a limb or, or they go, oh man, now I'm doing this. I never thought this was going to be me. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing that's just part of the, the fabric of what you've become as doctors. Absolutely. I think that, um, you know, every person in the medical field 
does a little bit of the emotional support. Yeah, um, yeah. In therapy, I think we, we get it maybe more than other people because, you know, we see these people sure. two and three times a week. We develop relationships with them, um, and the patients develop relationships with each other, which which also helps. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they sure. come in at the same time. They, they can talk and kind of, you know, console each other, et cetera. And then there's also a, a chess game of making the therapy hard, but at the same time, they've got to have a, a win every day, so to speak. So they've got to accomplish something so that it makes them feel better. You've got to get out of that, oh, this is hard, I can't do this. You've got to give them a little bit so that... It's got to be hard, right? It's Otherwise, be there's hard, no progress. Yeah. Right, yeah. but it's also you've got to let them do something that they can succeed, too. To add to that, actually, though we are, I'm a physician, but I'm a rehab physician, and it's my Dr. Woods is a physical therapist in Brent. We all come from the field. We are that department where people send to and the, the other doctors send to and they're not doing or they want them to do more. We are all about you can do. We start with that. Okay. We're, that hello, we're like, we're That's trying to see how can right we get the this beginning. Per- yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, we talked about it in the very first interview. This is about uh, the first thing is like, what do you like to do for front? How can we get you back to doing what you need to do for Brandon? It's a question sometimes I'll ask. I need an arm to go fishing. I mean, it'll be a special p- terminal device just for fishing. You know, he would oh my. Uh, be separate from what they would wear to a dance. You know, that would mm-hmm. be a cosmetic hand or mm-hmm. that sort of thing. So we all come from the field. So we are kind of, when you say we encourage, but I, I guess w- we are in the field of wanting to encourage to start with. That's right. where our right. core construct right. is. You can't do it. And we don't work in the realm of you cannot uh, do it. Do you, you yeah. find <laughs> yourselves working with the families as well as the patients themselves? You can, absolutely. Um, Especially either young or really uh, older, young, yeah. Yeah. Uh, older patients. You know, you get kids bringing uh, yeah. their elderly parents in and, and things like that. Um, so you always try to include them, one, because we want people to do stuff at home. And uh, children and, and the very uh, elderly t- tend not to either not remember or not want to do yeah, it at yeah. home. So if you get the family involved, have them do it together, then right. it's not, right. a, not right. as big of a deal. This also ties into your earlier question. You will have a child with a foot walking problem. Child's not going to go walk in and pick up the right shoulders or thotic. You know, so that's a place. So we, and also ties into the question, do we work with families? Of course, we would be primarily working with the mother and dad to help mm-hmm. with the child right, right, in right. that situation. And the same goes for the elderly. Because again, once again, we're children back again. We talked about the, <laughs> the physical, the walking physical on four, then on two, and then back on three legs again. So right. the, <laughs> phys- the physical therapy that is necessary if you have a prosthetic is almost very obvious. I'm thinking that there are people out there right now listening who might benefit from orthotics that never even thought they could benefit. Right. So um, since it's always it's so quick, it goes by so fast. What would you suggest? Should they? I don't know, what would they be going through? Maybe they're having trouble walking or? Yeah, I think um, uh, anyone that uh, maybe is frustrated, uh, uh, patients that have suffered a stroke, maybe they have MS, um, Mm -hmm. but they're, you know, of course, amputees, uh, maybe not happy with, you know, how they're progressing. uh, you know that those are the type of individuals that that would want to you know get in touch with us and um, you know uh, for for uh, you know mid Florida you know we don't we don't uh, even charge individuals for a consult you know, is that right get them in yeah oh, wow. and um, but yeah anyone that feels like the you know uh, they're dealing with uh, not living life to the fullest those are the individuals that that we're trying to address anybody um, with the physical yeah disability or a need mm-hmm. for a prosthetic they would prosthetic most of the time would know because they're missing a part right right the orthotic they have trouble i mean that's where i'm as a physician we would we're part of strive we call strive integrated and it doesn't have to be a prosthetic and orthotic clinic you can they can call and i think we have one number to call i think we mm-hmm. sound to give a uh, you know for to anybody who was interested in in one of the numbers is mid florida prosthetic and orthotic and which is three five two Eight seven three zero nine two five. That's purely from. Pr- that's twenty four. S- I mean, uh, seven okay. days, five days Actually, a week. I'm not, I'm not oh. sure what that phone number. That might be us. Um, it says on your card. So oh, that's. that's <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> oh, that's. Uh, well, we've got thirty seconds. You want to give a, another phone? Well, number? there's a key number <laughs> to call for this particular clinic. It's Strive's uh, clinic. It's okay. common for do- me and Dr. Woods and Brandon for at this point is three five two six nine zero seven seven. 
seven seven. Okay. Yeah. And that other phone number for is, is here locally is three five one three two zero seven for uh, Mid Florida. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. That was very good information. We recorded it, of course. And uh, if you're listening, and you want to share that with somebody who will benefit from it. It'll be up there by two o'clock this afternoon. Thank you, all three of you. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. A policy change for U.S. forces in Afghanistan where... The U.S. currently has about 9,800 troops and the president wanted to lower that to 1,000 by the time he left office. But in a major reversal, the president will soon announce that he will keep...